we sing. Your word is true, it will never fail. Our soul secure that you will carry us
darkest moments, in my darkest hours. You're the God who saves me when I'm crying out for help. When my faith is shaken, when I'm all struck down. You're the God who saves me. You're the God who saves. Let's sing it out. And I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, we bless your name. And I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. In your lavish kindness, I've been washed in grace. You're the God who loves me. Can't keep it to myself. I wanna shout your story. I'm gonna sing your praise You're the God who's mighty And you set my heart ablaze And I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times Oh To say, and I will bless the Lord at all times. And when you give and take, I'll stand on what you say, and I will bless the Lord at all times. And I can face the day, for you are strong to say, and I will bless the Lord. for giving us so much reasons to be grateful. Thank you for the life that you have blessed us. 
We thank you for the hope that you have given us. In Jesus' name. Let me read from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. It says, He rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So three things that I want to share is number one, rejoice always. So two words na parang sobrang hirap gawin. So we rejoice not just in good times, but even in the most painful and the most difficult moments of our lives, we can be joyful and we can rejoice because our joy is not based in our circumstances, but in God. I hope that when the time comes na mahirap, may pinagdadaanan tayo sa buhay, we will choose to look to God and ask God to strengthen us and to sustain us. Now, we will not see this rejoice always as a matter of feelings, but rather of obedience to God that we can celebrate knowing that the God who commanded us to rejoice always is faithful, that He will enable us to do it. And then secondly, to pray without ceasing. To pray continuously. To pray even if we feel like nothing is happening. We press on. We continue to pray because we know that there is a God who is in control. Because we know that there is a God who can do something into our situation. So prayer strengthens our faith. And I pray that that will be the desire of our hearts. Now, God, we want to have a stronger faith in you. And I hope that we will always uh, pray without ceasing. And then lastly, to give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all, not in some. So, uh, alam ko na isa to sa sobrang hirap gawin. Kasi it's so easy to to give thanks when everything is okay. Pero kapag ka mahirap na, parang ang hirap na rin magpasalamat sa Diyos. But my prayer is that you, sana when the time comes na nahihirapan tayo magpasalamat kay God, maging response lang natin, God, mahirap to, but I trust you. I know na as I go through these challenges, as I go through these hardships, you are with me. Na God, alam ko lang na after nito, may ginagawa ka sa buhay ko at may binagawa ka sa buhay ko. I, I, I hope na we will choose to bless the Lord at, at all times. Not just in good times, but at all times. Let's pray. God, we know that it is not easy to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances. But we can do it because it is your will. God, we will be able to obey these commands as we remain in Christ. God, I pray that we will always see your faithfulness, that we will always see your hands in our situations. May we never forget how loving and how gracious you are, Lord. May we, may we always choose to celebrate your goodness and your faithfulness for the rest of our lives. God, thank you for you are a God who is in control. God, thank you that we can always put our hope and in trust in you alone. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's continue to worship as I read from Genesis 14, verse 17 to 20 to remind us tonight of our tithing and giving. So it says here, After his return from the defeat of Kedor Lomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shavit, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God. And he blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. You see, 
Abraham at this time just came from a battle where he and his 318 men, again I say 318 men, prevailed over an army of five kings. This is five armies coupled up together. And it's so obvious that this was God's doing. God supernaturally delivered Abraham's enemies into his hands. And afterwards, what's, what's beautiful about it is Abraham's response was to give a tithe to Melchizedek, who was both a king and a priest to God at that time. What makes this interesting story and its relation to tithing is that this was actually 400 years before the law about tithing. So the question is, why did Abraham tithe, right? So to give a context, it's in ancient times, rulers gave tribute to rulers over them. And as a sign of their, this was, this was done as a sign of their allegiance to these kings and an acknowledgement of the protection that they were receiving. So in contrast to our giving and our tithe, when we do these things, in a way, we give reference to the first tithe and we acknowledge that God is our ruler and our protector. So we always say that giving is an act of worship. And I want to continue on with the story. You see, the king of Sodom um, interrupted their conversation, the one that Abraham was having with Melchizedek. And the king of Sodom um, actually uh, was saying to Abraham, I'm going to give you these things, these spoils of war, and, and I'm going to bless you. But Abraham humbly declined and he said, I want people to see that God is the one who made me rich. I want, I want people to see that it is not um, by your instruction that I won over them, but it is by God's instruction that I won over my enemies. So truly, giving is an act of worship. And whether we do it physically or online, diba? I hope that it's in our hearts that this is an act of worship. So, uh, just a few instructions. You may return your tithes and give your offerings by visiting victory.org.ph give or by scanning this QR, QR code on your screen. And but even if we're not able to meet face-to-face, -face, know that we can continue to stand with you in faith and prayer. So there are actually people going to be praying for you during this time. So don't hesitate to send your prayer requests and answered prayers by scanning the QR code flashed on our screen or going to this link provided. Also, um, if you want to take part in helping our frontliners, you may visit the link or scan this code on your screen. So, and yeah, you'll see that there are more details there. So go give, guys. And again, uh, let's pray for our giving. Uh, Lord, Father, thank you, Lord, for, for reminding us of this, the first instance, instance of tithing. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord, because um, see, Abram really wasn't the man who he he's known as right now. He's he's an, he's just one of the people. He one of, he's one of the characters there in the Bible who hasn't received his identity that we know of him now. And Lord, I just I'm just reminded of who we are. We're, when we give to you, Lord, it's about you. It's about our it's about our worship to you. It's not about who we are, Lord. I pray, Lord, that our giving is not of obligation. Lord, or, or out of religion, not just out of religious duty, Lord God, but it will be out of true worship to you. Lord, that we've seen you do great things in the past. Lord, and in this time, Lord, where, when we're in trouble, Lord, when we're facing something that feels like armies, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that we can glorify you even, in this, even through giving. Lord, that we can look back to these stories of how you've claimed and how you've won, Lord God, so many victories, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that when we give, we're encouraged by that. Lord, that we're worshiping you, Lord, because of the victories that you can give us. Lord, so thank you, Lord, for this time that we have together online. Lord, I pray, Lord, for all, all of these people. Lord, I pray that you would provide for them, Lord, that they would know you as this God most high. Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. So together, let us express our worship unto God by putting Him first in our lives and allowing Him to work in and through us. Let's continue to worship.
Good evening everyone. Welcome to our online youth service. Kamusta naman kayo mga kapatid? Sobrang miss na miss na namin kayo. Uh, don't worry guys. Uh, this setup is just temporary. So that's why let's continue to pray that um, God will um, deliver us from the very situ situation that we are in. I'm so excited to continue on with our series titled Lockdown. Last week, sinimula natin yung series na to and uh, we learned that the goal of this series is for us to know what it means to continue to honor God and make disciples despite being locked down in our situations. And ang inspiration natin dito is that uh, we are looking into some of Apostle Paul's prison epistles where he wrote instructions for a group of believers on how they can continue to honor God and make disciples. And um, last week, uh, we talked about Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, particularly in Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, it's about uh, having wisdom amidst the dark times. And last week, we learned that uh, we are to walk in love by pursuing purity and holiness. We are to walk as children of light by um, doing things that honors God and having nothing to do with deeds are, that are done in darkness. And lastly, we are to walk in wisdom by making best use of the opportune time that God has entrusted to us. Um, Next week, pag-usapan natin what it means to um, have reconciliation amidst a wrongdoing. But this week, uh, I like uh, what we'll talk about. It's about having joy amidst a suffering. Joy amidst suffering. And um, let me just read the passage of Scripture, our main verses in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Dala niyo ba yung mga Bibles niyo? So, basahin lang natin. It says here, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let's just pray. Um, know, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na pinagkalaw mo ulit sa amin for us to Lord, learn from your truth, be guided by it, be transformed by your very word. Thank you that it's alive and active, Lord God. We are excited to receive from you, Holy Spirit, guide and lead us into all truth. We offer this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, ang tanong natin is, what is joy? What comes to your mind when you hear the, when you hear the word joy? And I asked some of you sa FB, you know, and ito yung mga sinagot nyo, eh, naka-flash the screen. So, ang gagaling nyo talaga, eh, no? <laughs> but, uh, kidding aside, when we consider Paul's suffering, come to think of it, he's uh, without fault, but he was in prison. And then, uh, imagine the discomfort that he has. Hindi kagaya ng prison noon, yung mga prison na meron tayo ngayon. Um, mas matindi no, noon. Grabe. Imagine the discomfort. Imagine the, the pain that he probably had experienced. And also, come to think of it, he, he is also without assurance that he will continue to live. There's an impending death sentence. Hindi niya alam. Baka patay na siya the next day. But despite all of this, he was able to write um Philippians, which is considered to be an epistle of joy. And um, it, it is said that when, when you study uh, the book of Philippians, depending on a translation that you will use, the word joy or rejoice is mentioned 16 times. And sa Bible, pag ulit-ulit, ibig sabihin, ito yung tema. Uh, dito umiikot yung letter. And one part of the purpose of um, Paul's letter to the Philippians is to encourage them because Philippi is actually a Roman colony. So imagine, Krisyano ka na namuhay ka sa panahon na yun. Napapalibutan ka ng mga citizens of Rome who declares that Caesar is Lord. Pero ito ka Krisyano at namumuhay ka dun and ang pinaniwalaan mo, Jesus is Lord. Imagine how difficult, how challenging, how scary it could be. And that's why Paul is encouraging them to live beyond the circumstance by finding joy in Christ. And Paul is also thanking them for their unending support for the gospel. So ito, again, yung tanong din natin dito, considering his lockdown situation, why is Paul so full of joy despite the suffering that he's faced with? Bakit nag-uumapaw? And out of the overflow of that joy in him, he was able to share that joy to the Philippian church and to many more people. So what is joy really? Um, some would equate joy with extreme happiness. Pero 
That's not true. Happiness, happiness is not the same as joy. Happiness is not the same as joy. So let's try to compare happiness and joy. Ha- when we say happiness, it is external. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on the situation. It depends on the happenings. So happy ka kapag nangyari tong sitwasyon na inaasahan mo. Maybe you are preparing for a birthday party or an event. Or maybe you are an expecting a graduation celebration. Eh nangyari. Kaya happy ka. But joy on the other hand is not dependent on the externals. It's not dependent on the circumstance or on the happening. Joy on the other hand is something that is internal. Um, when you study Galatians chapter 5, it's said there that joy is actually part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we can learn that all in the scriptures when you study, we can learn that the source of joy is God. And the source is unlimited, unending, di na tapos. And it, joy is something that we can never manufacture on our own. And joy is something that is internal, something that God births in us, something that God can cause overflow. And uh, on the other hand naman, happiness is temporal. Pag sinabing temporal, it's focus on earthly things. Sa mundo, nakatoon yung attention mo. Therefore, it is fleeting because none of none, none of the things of this world will remain. Everything in this world is temporary. So, lilipas. But on the other hand, joy is something that is eternal. Panalo, di ba? Pag sinabi eternal, sabi sa Colossian, sabi ni Paul, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. As we fix our eyes on things above, as we have that eternal perspective, the Bible promises that joy will well up from within. Galing, no? And I, I like the biblical definition of joy. When you study the word joy uh, and it's in its origin, uh, it simply means awareness of God's favor. Awareness. Ibig sabihin, um, inaalala mo, uh, tinatamasa mo, nirehearse mo sa isip mo, at ine-enjoy mo yung thought na God has favorably disposed His love to all of us. Pag sinabing favor, ibig sabihin ito, approval, generous treatment, kindness that we don't deserve. Now, try to imagine God's favor upon all of us. His love, His blessings, His grace, His mercy, His kindness that we are undeserving of. But He He, he gave this to us anyway. Imagine rehearsing that in your mind. Imagine reflecting that in your heart. The Bible says that joy comes from that awareness of that favor and love that God has given us. And ito yung tanong natin. In light of what's happening around us, are you still joyful? In light of what's happening around us, are we joyful? Or is joy depleting in us? Uh, I like this from the Discovery Bible Commentary. Joy is completely grace-dependent. Therefore, it is circumstance independent. Joy is completely grace independent. Dependent on the grace of God that we did not earn, we did not work for, but is freely given to us that we have received. And therefore, it's circumstance independent. Na posible na mamuhay tayo na may joy, na nag-uumapaw, na ibabahagi natin sa iba. Because it's solely dependent on the grace of God. Now, despite what's happening um, in our surroundings, despite the discouragements, despite the frustrations, despite the cancellations of the events that we are hoping for, we can remain joyful because of who Christ is. Because joy is something internal and it's something that is eternal. Grabe, no? And pag mo, wouldn't you want to have that in your life? Wouldn't you want to experience joy? Kaya pala si Paul, ganyan na lang, nag pa yung joy. So, several things that help Paul remain joyful. So, we're gonna look at in uh, these things that hopefully will inspire us. Sabi sa Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. And I like that word, advance. 
Ngayon naman, pag inaral nyo yung origin ng word na yan, uh, the imagery that, that was used is like this. Imagine a group of word cutters. Uh, sorry. Imagine a group of wood cutters uh, clearing the way through an impenetrable forest for an advancing army. So that Greek word is prokope. So in the olden days, um, magpapadala muna sila ng uh, group of woodcutters uh, bago, bago susunod yung army, papunta ng war, so that any obstacle, any tree or any forest uh, would be chopped down para tuloy-tuloy yung pag-travel nila. And sabi ni Paul, uh, what has happened to him only served to advance the gospel. Yung imprisonment niya, yung, yung uh, adversity seemingly na meron siya, it only provided an opportunity for him to preach the gospel, to advance the kingdom. So, maybe to some, or maybe to us, but tingnan natin no, yung sitwasyon niya, naka-lockdown siya. It's an adversity. But to Paul, it's an opportunity. Paul's uh, lockdown situation is not an adversity. For him, it is an opportunity. Opportunity to testify about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Opportunity to glorify God. Opportunity to honor Him. Opportunity to advance the kingdom. And um, ito yung tanong ko sa atin. Diba? Ano ba yung mga seemingly adversities na meron tayo ngayon in our uh, lockdown situations? Or maybe in the past? Or maybe iniisip mo baka may encounter mo in the future? I, I pray that we'll be inspired by uh, Apostle Paul that rather than looking at it as an adversity, we will look at it as an opportunity. And the same way, uh, maybe... Honestly, no, kung ako yung nasa sitwasyon ni Apostle Paul, I would be disappointed because I, I, I'm I doing my part in, in preaching the gospel, advancing the kingdom, and yet, eto, nakakulong ako. Limited, nahihirapan. And ako lang yun, no? ganun ako kasalbahay. But to Apostle Paul, the, the lockdown situation that he is in is not a disappointment. For him, it is a divine appointment. Grabe, no? Paano naging divine appointment? Um, let me show a picture of the emperor's uh, elite guards or praetorian guards. I've learned na yung mga nagbabantay kay Paul during his house arrest are the very elite guards na meron si emperor during that time. So these are influential um, soldiers in the army. Uh, they were given high and special privileges. And yet, around the clock, binabantayan nila, binabantayan nila si Paul. And some scholars would say that um, there are instances wherein there's a specific soldier that will be assigned and Paul will be chained together with that soldier. Ganun ka tindi, naka-lockdown ka na, na-lockdown ka pa sa soldier. Pero kay Paul, it's not a disappointment. Diba? For him, ting, it's a divine appointment. It's not every day that, that you get an opportunity to be locked or chained to a person of influence. So alam nyo ba, ginawa ni Paul, ginrab niya yung pagkakata na yon para i-preach yung gospel sa mga soldiers na to. Grabe, solid, di ba? Panalo, saan ka ba? Why is to pre? <laughs> Talk about Apostle Paul, ibang klase. And um, indeed, um, put, imagine this now, Paul wouldn't have preached to them if not for the imprisonment. So to Paul, he is captured in his situation, but he has a captured audience together with him. So ang tanong ko sa atin, who are your captured audience in light of our ECQ in our lockdown situation? Sino yung mga kasama mo na lockdown sa bahay mo? They are your captured audience. Wala silang choice, pero pakinggan ka. <laughs> diba? So don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss God's divine appointment. So the point is this, we can be joyful amidst any situation if Jesus is our mission. We can be joyful amidst any situation if Jesus is our mission. One of the reasons he was rejoicing is because the gospel is advancing. And does it make sense to you? Grabe, no? Um, alam nyo, uh, philosoph- uh, philosophically speaking, there is a part in us that, that wants to be part of something grand, something bigger than us, something purposeful. These are things that uh, we want to be part of and these are the things that we want to suffer. We are willing to suffer for. 
um, to name a few, no? Man, uh, to the students. Diba? Willing ka, many, many students, if not all, many students are willing to sacrifice and suffer just to have good grades. Diba? Magpupuyat ka, di mo matutulog, mag-set aside ka ng marami oras. Diba? Para lang matapos mo ka lang mo gawin. And some people, they are willing to suffer for, for their relationships, for that person that they love. Oy, di ba? <laughs> willing kang matulog hanggang alas 4 ng madaling araw, makausap lang siya. Will, willing ka i-sacrifice tulog mo. Yung pala friends na kayo. Aray, sorry. Eh, Kini nga no? Willing kang um, isa- mag-sacrifice ng something valuable sa'yo para sa mga taong mahal mo. The same way with other people, there are a lot of NGOs, a lot of organizations that are willing to die for, or willing to to sacrifice or suffer for a particular cause. Si Paul, he is no different. Pero what he has is the gospel. He is willing to lay it all as, uh, down for the gospel. Sacrifice everything for the gospel. And guys, uh, this is just a reminder. In this life, you will find something to throw your life into. You will just have to choose. But the question is, Are these things worth throwing your lives into? Sulit ba kung ibubuhos mo yung oras mo sa bagay na yan? Sulit ba kung itatapon mo yung buhay mo sa relasyon na yan? Sulit ba kung, kung, kung pagkakatao mo, i-google mo dyan? Paul's reason is the gospel. And for him, it's more than worth it. Um, pag-isipan mong mabuti kung saan mo tinatapon yung buhay mo. Sana ultimately it is for God and for His gospel. So let me transition to to another thing that uh, we can learn from Apostle Paul. Paul was joyful because in Christ, he found his ultimate satisfaction. Paul was joyful because in Christ, he found his ultimate satisfaction. Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 to 9 in NLT version, uh, sabi niya dito, I once thought, These things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. So prior to these verses, alam nyo, in-enumerate ni Apostle Paul yung resume niya, yung accomplishments niya, yung, yung mga achievements niya, yung mga badges niya, yung mga awards na meron siya, if you may. In-enumerate niya, but sabi niya, in light of who Christ is, these seemingly treasures or good things that I have, I consider them worthless. I consider them garbage. In another translation, I consider them rubbish. Trapo, basura. Whoa, what a claim. Grabe na, sabi niya, yes, everything else is worthless compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Whoa, mind blown talaga. And, and to, to make matters worse, alam niyo ba, yung origin ng word na gar- garbage or rubbish dito, ang origin ng word na yon in Greek, it's the word poop or dung. An animal manure. Hindi ko na itatagalog. Gets you na yun. But nakadiri. Diba? And pasintabi sa mga kumakain. But imagine this. Paul was willing to consider everything, every good thing that he has. Consider them Like a, and look at them like an animal manure or dung. Consider them rubbish. We need to lay it aside in order to have Christ in His life. You know, when I when I was looking at this, no, na pa hard check talaga ako. Diba? Um, having Christ indeed surpasses everything in this world. There is because everything else apart from Him is rubbish. Ito yung tanong ko sa atin, do we consider everything rubbish, garbage, or dung, or trash in comparison to Christ? How much do we value Christ in our lives? Are there things in our lives that are competing for Christ's affection? Where are we drawing our satisfaction? Alam nyo, ngayong um, quarantine season, marami tayong oras mag-reflect. Marami tayong panahon um, para... Siguro, alalahanin and i-evaluate ano ba yung mga bagay na mahalaga sa atin. How about when it comes to our relationship with Christ? 
So, sadly, and I'm also guilty of this, sometimes, nangyayari opposite. That um, sometimes we'd rather value the things of this world. Rather than looking at them as rubbish, minsan, sadly, ouch, tagos, ang tinitrato natin trapo, si Jesus. Sorry, Lord. Guilty rin ako doon. What about us today? Whew. Do we consider everything rubbish in comparison to who Christ is? Where do we draw our satisfaction? Um, I'm reminded of this quote from C.S. Lewis. Sabi niya, if I find in myself this if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. And naalala ko si Apostle Paul, na encourage yung mga Philippians that though they are in a Roman colony, Paul is reminding them that they are citizens of the kingdom. Though they are living in, in that uh, part of the world, they are first citizens of the kingdom. We don't belong here in this world. We we belong to another citizenship. That's why ultimately, our satisfaction cannot be found in the things of this world. There is a God-shaped vacuum or void in our lives that only Christ can fill. Talk about sex, talk about relationships, talk about achievements, talk about riches, money, fame, all of those things. Nothing in this world can fully satisfy. Kahit gaano karami mag-like sa pinos mo, sa account mo, mag-share ng, ng mga tingwit mo, or mag-follow sa'yo sa TikTok, or kahit gaano karami na-achieve mo, o kahit gaano karami yung nag-admire sa'yo, hindi yun yung satisfaction na hinahanap mo na magpupun sa'yo. There's a, a voidness that only the love of Christ can feel. Not even the affection that you get from the people. Those would all fall short. In comparison to what Christ can offer, those things are animal manure. That's what Paul is saying. Grabe, no? Cut to dark. So here's the point. We can be joyful amidst any situation if Jesus is our mission and our ultimate satisfaction. We can be joyful amidst any situation if Jesus is is our mission and our ultimate satisfaction. He is the only mission worth throwing our lives into. He is the only source of true satisfaction. Um, I would like to end with this thought. Alam nyo, I've learned that in the book of Philippians, Christ was mentioned 36 times. Paul is simply saying, um, Paul is simply telling the Philippian church that joy is found in a person. And joy can only be found in Christ. Meron ka bang relationship with Jesus Christ? I, I'm talking about a genuine relationship. Hindi religion ang, ang tinutukoy ko dito. Hindi head knowledge or information. Because we can have plenty of information, pero posible na walang transformation. Meron ka bang genuine relationship? Joy depends on Christ. Joy is found in, can be found ultimately in a person. I pray that you will receive Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior. And to, to my fellow believers, uh, I would like to pray, especially to those that you find that your joy is somehow depleting. Parang, Kuya, hindi ko, ang dami kong hit ngayong season na to, ang dami nangyayari. And somehow, there's joylessness in, I want to pray for you. God can restore that. Nothing is impossible with Him. And I want to pray for that joy to overflow, that you may share that to others. Uh, but first, pag-pray ko lang yung mga friends natin who would like to surrender their lives to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Let me just pray. Lord, um, pinagdarasal ko po yung mga brothers and sisters ko na naikinig na yun. Maybe they are sensing in them as the Holy Spirit is touching them right now. I, I believe that even through technology, you are using 
um, this moment or got to touch them or speak to them, they recognize nila that there's a void in their lives or God and they are trying to find the fulfillment in the things of this world, the, the satisfaction in the world of the offer, but to no avail. But the good news is there is a Lord, there is a Savior by the name of Jesus Christ that can fill that emptiness. And I want to pray for them right now. Lord, would you speak to them, Lord? Would you quicken in them, Lord God? And allow them to experience your love. And if you are that person, I want to challenge you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am entrusting my life to you. Simula sa oras ito, kayo na po yung maging Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Punayin niyo po ako at paguhin niyo po ako. Hindi ako ng kapatawaran sa lahat ng kasalanan ko. Tulungan mo ako, talikuran lahat ng mga kamalian, Lord, na hindi nakaglorify sa iyo. Salamat sa panibagong pagkakataon na makilala ka ng Jesus. Uh, if you just pray that prayer, I just want to congratulate you. Uh, you just made the best decision ever. I also prayed that prayer many years ago and my life was never the same again. But I want to encourage you to have someone to walk you through your your faith journey. So I hope that you'll be part of one of our victory groups. Uh, i-message mo kami sa Facebook uh, page namin or oh yeah, uh, PM mo ako sa Facebook account ko and um, we will contact you, we will connect with you and uh, help you jumpstart your discipleship journey. Lastly, I want to pray for uh, all the believers um, if you are sensing in a way that because of the many discouragements, the many suffering or challenges, disappointments, frustrations that you are facing, somehow you are experiencing joylessness. You are experiencing dryness in your walk with God. Your joy is depleting. I want to declare to you um, the prayer of uh, King David in Psalm 51. Psalm yun don, Restore to me, O God, the joy of my salvation. You know, it's never too late. God is able to restore what the enemy or what the, the world tried to steal from us. God is able to restore. Let me just pray. Lord, I'm praying for my brothers and sisters who are watching right now, who are experiencing joylessness right now. I ask Holy Spirit for you to touch them. I, I ask Holy Spirit for you to do a work in them, Lord God, so that um, joy will overflow. Lord, that oo ma Paul, Lord God, hindi namin to kaya ay manufacture on our own. But we want that joy coming from you. Let it overflow. Let it overwhelm us. That we may share that to other people who are in need of you the same way. I pray that you will allow us to see the challenges that we have as an opportunity, Lord God, to be a witness for you as an opportunity to share your love. And I pray that we will embrace that mission and we will have you, Jesus, as our ultimate satisfaction. All for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, as an application, uh, two things that I would like to challenge all of us with. Um, una, who are the people in your life that can be your joy mentors? Si Apostle Paul, he is a joy mentor to the fellow believers that he has. A joy mentor is simply someone who processes life's challenges with you and points you to Jesus. So maybe that's a victory group leader, maybe that's a campus missionary, maybe that's a trusted friend, a Christian friend that you are accountable to. Reach out to that person. And next, who is someone that you will help find joy in Christ this week? Um, this ECQ season, a lot of people are searching for hope. A lot of people are searching for answers. Sadly, they are looking for it in the wrong places. But as, um, as a people of God, tayo mga Christian, alam natin kung saan matatagpuan yun. So, sino yung mga kaibigan mo, kakalala mo, family member mo, that um, uh, are in need of Jesus? I pray that you will help them find joy in Christ this week. God bless you. See you again next week for our online youth service. Thank you so much for joining us today. So we hope to see you all next week for our online youth service. Also be part of our 
online activities at Every Nation Campus Malate and Every Nation Campus Pasay Facebook page. So before we dismiss, let me pray for you. So I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So God bless everyone. See you all next week. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you.